Hey everybody, Caleb Rothy here, the Percussion Education Coordinator for WGI Support of the Arts, and I'm joined by James Catherall today, and we're going to talk for a couple of minutes about uh, power consumption and uh, what the needs for your ensemble's gear might be. So James, thanks for joining me. What are your thoughts when it comes to power consumption? Absolutely, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so for the most part, in, in the indoor activity in this space, when it comes to power consumption stuff, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. Um, as far as the needs, there's not really anything as far as how the activity functions currently um, for indoor stuff specifically that really needs um, any sort of crazy levels of gear into the professional space, whereas drum corps have definitely started to push into that space more of, of higher power consumption needs and worrying about 30 amp power distros and, and all of those kinds of things um, that for the most part in our activity, especially that for the foreseeable future will probably stay this way is that we are don't have to worry nearly as much about volume and getting big volume because we're in such a small indoor space that volume is a lot easier. Um, and so that's really where the power consumption needs get a little bit bigger is when you have drum cores and other kind of professional acts trying to push a lot of volume, they have to worry about how they're going to get all of that power to do those things. Um, whereas for the most part in our activity, uh, like 99% of groups can function just fine off of standard house power type of outlets um, to make that stuff happen. So for the most part, um, you do have those, those two guaranteed outlets uh, in the venues when you get there is you have one at the front of the performance area and then you have your one at the back of the performance area. Um, and I feel like, I guess maybe Caleb, you could help with it too. Cause I feel like I remember Mark Thurston mentioning some stuff about um, circuits and if they're able to guarantee that those are on different circuits or if that's just kind of however that building is set up whether both outlets would be on the two different circuits or if it might just be one circuit yeah whenever possible we always try to have those two be uh, independent circuits if the building is wired that way there are obviously some buildings that you're going to get into that the whole gym is wired up on one circuit and they're just going to be connected to that but once you start getting into the larger arenas, there are usually multiple circuits there. And we always try to make sure that front side and back side are on separate circuits whenever possible. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So that that helps just with the amount of headroom of power that you have um, when they're on the independent circuits, just making sure how much you're pulling from each of those. Um, and so for the most part on, on a standard circuit of what I would suggest like, uh, working off of or like making your plans around is that you'll have a 15 amp circuit would be like the most guaranteed for sure everywhere a 15 amp would be super safe. Um, some places might have a 20 or even have a 30 amp house power type of situation, but for the most part is just aiming on having 15 amps of room to be able to draw power from. Um, and so then from there, that is now on you to figure out the planning of how much you are drawing of that power. Um, because if you go over that 15 amps, that's when you're going to start tripping circuits and then you're going to lose power and, and run into problems. Um, so that comes from just looking at all of the, the gear that you have. Um, for the most part, the biggest ones are going to be your speakers if you have mains and especially your sub speakers and any power amps. Um, they will most times have like a little sticker on the back of the speaker somewhere that might give you some specifications as far as the power draw. Uh, the other part for sure is if you go online and just look up the model and the brand of your speaker and then look up like a manual or like a spec sheet. Um, in that spec sheet, it'll have a few different uh, areas where it's listing um, the power draw of that device and what it what it pulls. Um, and speakers can be like somewhat tricky to figure out the, the clearest part of the math just because it's highly dependent on how much volume you're putting out of them and how hard you're driving that speaker. Um, and like the same thing with that I was talking about earlier in this activity, we're usually not pushing those super hard depending on what level of amp and speaker you have. Um, but usually it is safest to go with whatever the, the higher level of power draw is going to be from that speaker. Um, and you can look up the, the conversion of amps to watts because sometimes you'll get both of those. Sometimes it'll show you the watts and sometimes it'll show you the amps. Those are both very similar things on the electrical side of things is just trying to figure out 
which number, but they can both be converted to each other. Um, just knowing that the, the circuit, if we go off of 15 amps, would also be 1800 watts. So if you're thinking about that and you're going for the 15 amp circuit and making sure you're not gonna do too much there, that would also be equivalent to 1800 watts. So if you get either of those, you find those numbers on your spec sheets, um, that's basically your, your headroom, is trying to make sure that nothing you do is gonna hit above that level. Um, so that's important to know for the venues that you're gonna go into and when you're doing that stuff and when you're inside of the performance arena, making sure that you have um, the headroom to do that stuff. And I would say, like I had said earlier at the beginning, that the majority of that, for the majority of groups, is going to be well below that 15 amps. And not very many groups are going to be at a place where they're pushing above 15 amps and might need to figure out some sort of side solutions. Um, but for the most part, you should be fine with those 15 amps and, and be able to make that work. Hey, James, um, one of the things I wanted to mention is something new that we've implemented for WGI regionals this year, just on our end. What does WGI do to uh, test power and to make sure that all the groups are set up for success at the events? Um, so one thing that we always do at the beginning of the day is we'll get in there with a continuity checker like this, um, and we'll test both the front side power and the back side power. And this just tells us whether uh, everything is wired properly, whether it's grounded correctly, all that kind of stuff. So um, rest assured, when you come to a WGI event, a regional or WGI World Championships, uh, we've checked all of the uh, the circuits for continuity anywhere that we're supplying power to the groups. Um, something new that we are implementing for 2025 and beyond is uh, we're also adding a voltage meter that we're going to connect in there um, at all the regionals. So we will have our TNP judge hook this up before the event um, and check the voltage, make sure that's in spec. Um, here in North America, 120 is the standard voltage spec that you're kind of looking for. Um, but just know that that operates actually within a range and you never get that number. Um, like it never stays 120 and exactly 120. Just even as I've been sitting here, I've seen 117, 118, 119. So it, it moves up and down um, during the, you know, like from minute to minute. Um, but basically what you're looking for is to make sure that voltage is somewhere between 114 and 126. That's what we're looking for. Anything less than 114, uh, we might have some hiccups with not enough voltage. Anything over 126 could be a, a safety hazard for some of our equipment. So we're looking for something in that range. So if you pop in and you see 117 or 120 or 122, um, you know you're good to go. So at regionals, we're going to have our TNP judge plug in this little voltmeter uh, during all of the breaks. And so on a break, you can just come in and take a look front side power, back side power, and kind of get a reading of what that voltage is sitting at in that minute um, right then. So that'll be available to all groups now at uh, WGI events going forward. James, anything else that you want to share or add uh, on this, this topic of power consumption? Um, yeah, I guess just like the, the last small one is um, talking about getting like I guess maybe we can also figure out if this is part of this video, but it was just talking a little bit about the gas generators as well as part of that with the knowing the amount of power that you're going to draw of doing that math as well to figure out um, staying within spec as far as what the venues you're going to go into and then just making sure you're finding that same number for the type of gas generator that you would want for your ensemble um, that for the most part most groups uh, especially in like high schools and most independent level groups can operate off of like the, the pretty standard like Honda 2000 watt generators that you see a lot is usually fine. Um, if you feel like you're starting to push more and you have um, particularly more speakers is probably the point when you're gonna wanna figure some new situations out is even going up to like a 3000 watt generator. Um, and, but that would all kind of live in that same area as you're doing the math for your equipment and the gear that you have and how much it's pulling. Um, that, that is just the other part of figuring that out to make sure you also have the right generator that you're gonna be using in the warm up lot to keep everything powered on. Yeah, that's great advice and, and great to think about pairing your generator with your sound setup. Like what, what are we using in terms of amps, powered speakers? What are our needs and do we have a generator that's uh, paired nicely for that? I also wanna take this opportunity to remind everybody that is for uh, outside in the lots when you're warming up, things like that. If you are using a gasoline power generator, you want to absolutely make sure that that goes back on the truck before your ensemble pushes to the arena or the gymnasium. We definitely cannot bring gasoline power generators inside an indoor space. That's a huge uh, safety hazard. So if you're using one of those, make sure that's for the lot only and not something that you take inside um, yourself. All right, James, this has been great and awesome. 
And I uh, look forward to chatting with you about a couple of other topics as well. Thank you.